Firebase is a backend as a service that gives you a wide range of features that would be very complex to implement on your own. And what makes Firebase so popular is that it is very easy to use. In fact, you can easily add authentication and a remote database and server-side functions to your app with very little effort. And since Firebase is hosted on Google Cloud, you don't have to worry about managing your own server and scaling issues if your app becomes successful and is used by millions of users. But of course, Firebase is not a silver bullet, and depending on your app requirement, it may or may not be the right choice. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of all the Firebase pros and cons for Flutter app development. And in order to give you the full picture, we'll consider many factors, including what features are available, with particular attention to the remote database, because this is often the most important deciding factor. We'll also look at what platforms are supported. And we'll talk about Dart support, both on the client and on the server. Then we'll talk about pricing, as well as portability and vendor lock-in, which is an important factor to consider. And then we'll focus on the documentation and the developer experience, which are very important too. And we'll wrap up with a summary of the pros and cons, so you can decide if Firebase is right for you. Ok, so let's get started. And when it comes to how many features are available, Firebase is in a very strong position by offering things like Cloud Firestore, Authentication and Cloud Functions, which are needed by most apps. But in addition to that, you also have things like extensions, app check, as well as hosting, cloud storage, and machine learning. And when it comes to releasing and monitoring your app, you can use products like Crashalytics, Google Analytics, Performance Monitoring, as well as Firebase Test Lab and App Distribution. And also you can engage with your users using features like Remote Config, A-B Testing, Cloud Messaging, Dynamic Links, and In-App Messaging. And the bottom line is that for the vast majority of apps, Firebase is likely to offer all the features you need. But as they say, the devil is in the details, and one of the most important things to consider when starting a new project is what kind of database you need. And if you use Firebase, the most popular option is Cloud Firestore, which is a NoSQL database. And what I really like about Cloud Firestore is that it is very easy to use, and comes with useful features like real-time listeners, caching and offline mode, which are definitely things you want from a modern database. In fact, real-time listeners are my favorite feature and make it easy to sync your data across multiple devices and rebuild your UI automatically when the data changes on the backend. And on top of that, offline support is enabled by default on mobile because the Cloud Firestore client SDK caches every document that is received from the backend. And this means that Cloud Firestore will work smoothly when your users go offline for a couple of seconds or minutes or days. And as soon as the connection is back, then all the data is synced with the server and across devices. So overall, real-time listeners, caching and offline mode are some great advantages that come out of the box, and not something that you would want to implement in your own custom backend. With that said, Cloud Firestore has some disadvantages too. For example, it does not support full text search, which is something that is needed in many kinds of applications, such as e-commerce sites, where you need to be able to query an entire product catalog. So keep in mind that if full text search is important to you, you may need to use external services like Algolia, which can be integrated with Firebase. And since this is available as a Firebase extension, it is quite easy to set up. But it's also relatively expensive, at $1 per 1000 requests. And it would be nice if we had full text search directly with Cloud Firestore without having to rely on third-party services. And another disadvantage is that when it comes to querying data, Cloud Firestore has some limitations. And these limitations may not be obvious when you're just starting out, but they can bite you later when your database structure and queries become more complex. Though the good news is that support for all conditions was recently introduced in Cloud Firestore. But overall, a bigger question that you need to ask yourself is whether a NoSQL database is what you want, or if you should go with a relational database, such as PostgreSQL or MySQL. And while relational databases come with a steeper learning curve, they can make your life easier down the line, especially if your data is highly structured and will benefit from being able to run complex SQL queries. Next up, let's switch gears and talk about what platforms are supported. And a quick search on pub.dev reveals that all the Firebase packages can be used on Android, iOS, macOS and web. But if you're building a Flutter app on Windows or Linux, then you are out of luck, because these platforms are not supported by Firebase. And the only exception to this is Firebase Alt, which can run on Windows and Linux using the Firebase Alt desktop package. But once again, all the other packages are available on these four platforms only. And one important thing to note is that all the Firebase packages for Flutter rely on the underlying iOS, Android and Web SDKs, rather than being implemented in pure Dart. 
And this also means that they require some platform specific configuration. And for simple apps, this is easy to do using the Flutter 5 CLI tool. But as soon as you start adding more complex features like analytics or push notifications, then configuring everything correctly on each platform can become a challenge. However, a bigger problem is that if you want to write server side code using cloud functions, then you have to use the Firebase Admin SDK. And this is available for JavaScript or TypeScript, but not for Dart. And this means that there is no official way to write full stack applications in Dart using Firebase. And if that is what you really want, then you have to look into alternative backends, such as ServerPod and Dart Frog. But assuming you do use Firebase, then you end up in a situation where your Flutter client code is written in Dart and your server side code is written in JavaScript or TypeScript, which is not ideal, because you have to learn two different languages, which impacts your development speed. And also, you can't share your business logic and data models across the entire stack. And you can't reuse your favorite Dart packages on the server. On the plus side, when you write cloud functions in JavaScript or TypeScript, you get access to the entire JavaScript ecosystem, and this is far more mature than the Dart ecosystem. Next up, let's talk about pricing. And this is something that for some reason, people are scared about, when the reality is that Firebase has a very generous free tier, meaning that for most hobby projects, your cost will be a big fat zero. And if you ever exceed the limits of the free plan, then your cost will scale up based on usage, but still remains very affordable. And in any case, most Firebase products include a usage tab, where you can see the usage for any given period. And there's also this usage and billing page, where you can see a breakdown of all your billable metrics. And for extra peace of mind, you can go to your Google Cloud account and set budgets and email alerts if your usage exceeds certain thresholds. And the biggest takeaway here is that pricing shouldn't really be your main concern. On the other hand, portability and vendor lock-in is a more tricky subject. And one of the biggest drawbacks about Firebase is that Cloud Store is a proprietary database and all your customers' data is stored on Google servers. And this means that if you ever want to migrate all your data to a different backend or host it somewhere else, then you are in for a world of pain. Though at least, Firestore offers some options to backup your data using the Google Cloud Console. And you can use these options to export the entire database or select one or more collection groups, which will be saved to a Google Cloud storage bucket of your choice. Though keep in mind that you'll be built for this based on the number of documents, reads and writes. And this brings us to the next drawback of Firebase. And that is that unlike other popular backends like Superbase, Firebase doesn't offer a self-hosted solution. And on one hand, this is not a big problem, since the whole point of a backend as a service is that you don't want to manage your own servers. On the other hand, all your data is hosted on Google servers, meaning that Google owns your data and not you, and you don't have full control over your backend. Next up, let's talk about documentation and the developer experience. And documentation is something where for the most part, Firebase is doing a good job. In fact, Firebase comes with extensive documentation covering the most important features. And you'll find that many of the examples in the docs include code snippets which are written in Dart. However, the documentation can be spotty at times. And there are cases where you'll only find what you need in the old Flutter Fire website, which is no longer updated. With that said, the Firebase console makes it easy to add Firebase to your Flutter app by showing you all the required steps. And for simple apps, the setup only takes a few minutes and can be done with a CLI tool known as Flutterfire. And once you've added Firebase to your Flutter app, you can use the Firebase UI packages to more easily integrate various Firebase features into your app. And this can save you a lot of time, particularly when it comes to adding authentication flows so that the user can sign in with email and password or Google sign in. Alright, so this wraps up our overview about the Firebase pros and cons, and we can do a summary. And overall, I find that what makes Firebase good is that it offers a large number of useful features, along with a good developer experience that helps you ship your apps faster. And as we have seen, the pricing model is quite affordable. And overall, Firebase is a great solution to ship secure apps at scale. However, what is not good is that there is no Windows or Linux support, and we also don't have a native Dart client SDK. And as we have seen, we can't write cloud functions in Dart, which leads to a bigger learning curve and less code reuse across the client and the server. And as a drawback, I would also include the limitations of Cloud Firestore, which only offers limited query capabilities and no full text search. And as we have seen, if you choose Firebase, you are locked in and you'll find it hard to migrate to a different backend later on. With that said, Firebase is a very mature platform, which is backed by Google and integrates very well with Flutter. And I've been happy to use it as a backend for most of my Flutter apps for many years. 
And if you want to learn more about Firebase, you can take a look at my new Flutter and Firebase course, where you'll build a full stack e-commerce application and learn about all the most important Firebase features. And just so you know, in addition to all the video content, each lesson will come with its own notes, along with code snippets and additional resources that you can use for reference. And you'll also get access to the full source code, as well as a Slack channel where you can ask questions if you get stuck. And if you are not sure if this course is for you, keep in mind that I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. And if you enroll within the initial launch period, you can get all of this with a 40% discount. So if you'd like to take this offer, all you have to do is to head over to the course page using this URL, which you can also find in the description below. And from here, you'll be able to go ahead and purchase the course. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you'll choose to go ahead and take your Flutter and Firebase skills to the next level.